Hey guys, welcome back. This is Daniel on the newly revamped channel Evolve. Today I have Elena with me, and today we're going to talk about boundaries. Uh, Elena, if you don't mind introducing yourself. Yes, uh, I'm Elena Semenek. Um, I'm uh, a psychologist and the life coach, and I'm the founder of Psychology of Happiness. And I'm grateful to Daniel to be here and to discuss this, one of the most important topics for me at least. Yeah, I, I think it's really important. <laughs> I think a lot of people get so they're so busy in their day to day that they don't think about, you know, their relationship, the micro and like what they can do to not only like enhance their relationship, but themselves within that relationship. Yeah. So maybe you can go into, I guess, the biggest reason why boundaries are important and, uh, you know, everything else you have to say. Yeah, so uh, let's talk about what the boundaries are. So what do boundaries mean? And boundaries is your ability to say no, is your ability to protect your own interests, your ability uh, to not allow people to use you, uh, ability to kind of put yourself in this world and uh, be free of uh, expressing yourself, your opinion, your feelings without feeling uh, guilt or shame. This is the problem. A lot of times we can say yes, and then we feel guilt, or we can say no, and then we feel shame. So boundaries is ability to express yourself and create healthy relationships. That's awesome. And so, like, what do you see? What do you think the biggest challenges people face uh, with that? Do you think it is the lack of control, or they're just not thinking about it, or I think it's, maybe it's lack of awareness? And of course, everything comes from our childhood. So if our parents did not teach us how to use healthy boundaries, then we don't know how to do it. So that's just the lack of awareness that we don't have healthy boundaries. And unfortunately, if we did not learn it in a childhood, it's very hard for us right now to create healthy relationships. Right. And um, I would like to uh, start talking about three types of boundaries so people can at least get aware of what type of boundaries they are using. Yeah, I, I wanted to know for myself too. I didn't even know there were different kinds of boundaries, so. Yes, yes, the first type is no boundaries. Uh, it means that a person does not have any boundaries, that's simple. And if you don't have any boundaries, then your friends, your coworkers, your family members will exploit you. And for example, you will be the one who stays at work at night to finish a report. You will be the one who uh, will be the best friend because you're gonna organize uh, the party. You will, you're gonna take care of everybody. You will be the best son or the best daughter because uh, you are willing to drop everything and come to help his parents. So no boundaries basically mean uh, that uh, in 99% of all situations, you cannot say no. And people will exploit you, unfortunately, uh, because you cannot say no. And manipulative people, uh, narcissists, uh, selfish people, they are looking for people with no boundaries. And they will use their internal radar to find you because this is <laughs> this is what they want. They want they to just have a sonar going off in their head and they're just like, bam, that's you. Yes, yes. So yeah. the second type of boundaries is um, opposite, uh, impermeable boundaries. And uh, uh, these are um, boundaries that are not flexible at all. So people with impermeable boundaries almost never say yes. And usually those people don't have friends. They don't like uh, to work on a team and they don't like family and friends gatherings. And other people might think that uh, these people uh, are rude and selfish, but unfortunately, those people are lonely because they don't have anybody and they are not rude. Uh, they just have been hurt before. So they cannot trust people. They don't know how to trust another person. And um, a very good example of a person with the impermeable boundaries is shown in the movie, uh, Yes Man. Uh, yeah. yeah, and the character Carl, uh, who is played by Jim Carrey, he always say no at the beginning of the movie. And then in the movie, he's learning how to say yes to everything. And unfortunately, when we say yes to everything, it is as bad as when we say no to everything. Right. So the question that you might have is like, 
what other type of boundaries are healthy. And the third type of boundaries, which are your healthy boundaries, uh, is flexible boundaries. And it means that a person uh, can say either yes or no, and it's going to depend on the situation, it's going to depend uh, on the person, and the most importantly, it's going to depend on the outcome that you want to receive. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm sure that most... Uh, People uh, can say like, of course, I can say yes and no, of course, I have flexible boundaries, but in reality, there are only small percentage of people who have healthy boundaries. And right. usually people sacrifice their own interest, their time, they sacrifice their wishes, uh, their goals, because they don't want to hurt another person. Or maybe they don't want to argue with their spouse or they don't know what to do when kids gonna cry so that's why we people like you know every one of us like to sacrifice something just because we don't know how else we can react and um flexible boundaries is the boundaries when you create different boundaries with different people this is the most important uh, thing probably to understand that you can have different boundaries with different people and for example with your spouse uh you should have transparent boundaries less boundaries because you want to be vulnerable you want to trust the person you want to show your emotions this way you can create like close profound meaningful relationships but uh, when it comes to kids for example and if uh, kids misbehave then you should switch on to impermeable boundaries because uh, with kids, when they misbehave, you should tell them and you should teach them that there is a rules in the house and uh, they should follow those rules. And this way, they will know what do you expect from them. So right. permeable boundaries are not always bad. Sometimes they can help you like, to organize, to have structure in your relationship, in your family. And of course, when you talk to your kids about their feelings, their emotions, here you don't need impermeable boundaries opposite you have to be open you have to talk to them you have to let them to be vulnerable mm -hmm. so what's your view on on transforming and evolving your your um i guess your behavior when it comes to boundaries because a lot of people out there might be saying you know i'm definitely transparent or i'm definitely impermeable um you know is there a way where i can you know change you know, are you stuck? Is it really about like boundary management or is there something better beyond management? No, this is, we, we can definitely learn this. And the first step is to be aware. The first step is to be aware what type of boundaries do you use? Because when we are in a situation, especially with people uh, that we love, our parents, our spouses, our best friends, this is the situation when we allow people to basically break our boundaries and to use us. So the first step is to be aware. The second step, uh, in my opinion, is to understand why, what's algorithm, what's old belief system, or what behavior you are using and how to break it. And um, I have webinar about this, um, uh, about 10 reasons why people cannot say no. And um, I encourage you to watch this webinar. I don't want to repeat myself and 10 reasons a lot. We, not, we don't have time right now. Yeah. But basically one of the reasons is a good boy, a good girl syndrome. When a person wants to be good and wants to be a nice friend and a nice person. And I explain in my webinar how to basically how this behavior was or was uh, developed. So the second step is to understand yourself better. Like, why do you do this, this, and this? And when you will be aware of yourself, when you will understand the reasons behind your behavior, then you can learn how to create healthy boundaries. Uh, the key is to be respectful towards other person and treat yourself with respect. Mm. See, I think I think a lot of people out there, they might be like me where I'm very extreme, where I just can't be like, I'm just like, no, or yes, or like, you know, because um, I'm very about controlling my, my world, right? Um, and from what you're saying, it almost sounds like I grew up very transparent 
And then I'm trying to be more, <laughs> I'm trying to be more like, it's almost like I'm going through the motions. Do people do that? Do they kind of like practice and everything? And then they kind of land it flexible over time if they're trying to be healthier. Cause I feel like for me, I'm like trying to be more flexible. It seems, you know, and then I, I pick up when I'm saying to myself, you know, I really shouldn't have done this. Now I'm going to be committing like an hour of my time. And why, why did I say yes to this or, or. Yeah, so this is when I was talking about healthy boundaries, when you feel guilt or shame or like, why did I do this? Why did they say this? Did, it means that you were not truthful to yourself. Mm -hmm. And this is your point to grow. This is not bad. This is for you. And it's, and it's amazing because a lot of people, they cannot even uh, admit the truth. And you are aware, you can see where you can grow. And uh, like self-awareness is an amazing tool for self-development. So you can start, you know, doing something about this. Mm -hmm. and, yeah, go ahead. Oh, no, I was going to say, I don't, I know I don't want to, I know you have a lot to cover. Um, but I was wondering for people listening out there, what's something that they can integrate into their daily life that can help them, you know, uh, with their boundaries is there something like really quick that you know you can say well if you tried this and you did this you know and you and you integrated this maybe you'd be able to you know see it better when it happens yeah um uh, unfortunately there is no quick way to do it because yeah. if, if it were you would do it yourself like we are right. here we're discussing this topic because it's not an easy topic Mm -hmm. And we've been using uh, unhealthy, impermeable, or you know, no boundaries for many, many years in our life. Mm -hmm. And there is no quick tool to you know to fix it, to change it. Right. So, um, the first thing I think there are three advice that uh, three pieces of advice that I would like to share. The okay. first one is when you want to react, wait. Like just count and you have like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So do not give reaction right away. Uh, the second is think about uh, the situation. Whom are you talking to? Is it your spouse? Is it your coworker? Is it your boss at work? Because uh, it depends. You don't want to give the same reaction, you know, to all different people. And uh, the third uh, advice is think: What do you want to achieve about the outcome first? Do you want to keep your relationship? Do you want to keep your job? Do you want to be treated respectfully? That that spouse one's dangerous. I feel like if you if you wait too long, they're gonna be like, "What are you thinking?" <laughs> <laughs> right? Um, you can just say, "I'm thinking about you, me, and our relationship." Ah, okay. That's 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 pretty clever, right there. Right? It circles yeah. back. If you my know, husband will tell me that I'm thinking about you, me, and our relationship, it's like, okay. So, what are you thinking about? <laughs> yeah. It's, you know, I um, it, that's interesting because last night I actually had, I'm not going to name the situation, but I had an experience where I decided, you know, I was, and this is how I think, you know, I'm like, you know, uh, this person wants me to do X and I'm like, and I want to do Y. Um, and I, I always try to make everything work, you know, within my life and the other person. So I'm trying to, I don't know if that's flexible, right? I go, well, I could do this and I can always get to that. And I feel, I didn't feel guilty, I think, but I felt like I put myself second yeah. and, I let, and it's, and, and I know very quickly when I put myself second and not first, mm -hmm. it's like when I was younger, I was really looking for that. Like when I'm saying, when I say younger, I mean, you know, high school, when I was way younger, I was really looking for that approval. So of course I'm not thinking about, Oh, I'm first putting my, where am I putting myself? Right. So, um, yeah, no, last night I, it was like, I put myself second, but it was, it wasn't serious. Right. So is there a difference between when it's serious versus when it's not serious? I mean, of, of course it is. I think but, when, when, when in serious situation, we will react usually based on our emotions. That's the hardest thing because when it's serious, it means that uh, we were hurt or, our emotions are out there and uh, like um, we, we tend to react. So there's reactive boundaries and proactive boundaries. Reactive boundaries is when you react based on the situation, based on your emotions. If you feel sad, you can scream, you can cry, you can get angry, or some people will ignore another person 
pretend that another person does not exist, ignore calls, checks, and conversations. This is all uh, reactive boundaries, and which are kind of childish boundaries, unfortunately. Okay. And uh, the proactive boundaries is when you choose your reaction, but it's very hard. So it's gonna take you sometimes, maybe, you know, first it's gonna be once out of 10 times when you will be able to choose your reaction. Then it's gonna be twice, then it's gonna be three times. So it's gonna take some time till you will figure out how to do it. So if I'm hearing you correctly, right, you know, it's gonna it's gonna be hard, you know, to really be present when to make the decisions. But, you know, I think it's important when you're faced with something that you're unsure of, you want to really pause and give yourself some actual time and not to just yeah. kind of quickly answer the other person, right? Because, yes. And and then maybe and then what you're because it makes sense because if you don't think then you know, you're going to just continue to feel these, re these, these emotional repercussions, right. Of, yeah. um, you know, the guilt and whatever. Yes. Uh, also, uh, when you give a quick answer, a person might think that you don't care or you rude or you selfish or something else. But when you think and take pause, a person will see that something is happening with you. And if you will start the conversation and say something like, listen, this is very important uh, thing for me. And uh, I would like to be honest with you. I think I'm sure like it's going to be much better than you will just, you know, give a quick reaction based on your emotions. Yeah. Plus, do you think also in a way it, it shows the other person, it allows the other person to respect you more because yeah. you're, not, you're just not. You know, in sales, they call it laying down, right? You're just not going with, with, with whatever the person's saying, right? Yes, you're not just throwing some reactions at him or throwing your bad negative emotions or your, like, the feelings of uh, pitiness, like, you know, I, I'm, I'm a victim here. No, when you communicate with the person, then the person will mostly, most likely listen to you and appreciate you because when you communicate and when you take pause, it's like you respecting yourself and you respecting the other person and you respecting the relationship that you have, not just blaming or like, you know, sacrificing yourself, but mm -hmm. trying to make it more profound, more meaningful. Mm -hmm. So I want to, I want to circle back to something. I had a really interesting idea to the three different types of boundaries. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's really important that, you know, if you're with somebody, if I'm going to use an example with like, you know, if you're like with a girlfriend or boyfriend or a spouse, right? Mm -hmm. And then you can kind of figure it out from there with your friends and family, right? Yes. Um, if, if I think it's really important to know what your, your partner's type is, right? Ground level type is, right? Whether they're, tri and to better communicate and understand that, you know, going forward, you know, how to help each other be more flexible. If they're not in that place of being. Yeah. Yes, because if you know that your partner, let's say your partner uh, has impermeable boundaries, maybe for your partner it's hard to say yes. And if you know this, okay, of course you can be more patient. You can you can say, listen, I know that this is my this might be a hard decision for you, uh, but I really would like us to find the best that will work for both of us. So you can kind of you know talk about your partner's feelings and let her or him know that you understand what he's going through. Right. I think this is really important too when I think about it because if anybody ever wants to be serious in a relationship and go into the future with somebody, yeah. you know, you're going to need to be able to talk about values. You're going to need to be able to talk about doing everything together. And if you have two people that are, you know, not, especially not even just the same, right? Because it doesn't help if both of you are transparent, right? Mm -hmm. because issues will arise if you're not flexible, it sounds. But it's yeah. it's just as important to know so that you're prepared for when you have a serious conversation about your next move together, you know, that you handle it appropriately and mindfully. Yes. And you probably you've probably heard about win-win strategy in business. Mm -hmm. And in relationship, you can apply this strategy as well. So it's like Think about yourself, think about your spouse and about the relationship. So it's you, me, and us. 
And if yeah. you will forget about one element, then it's, this system is going to collapse. Right. There's always three elements, you, me, and us. It's not only about you, because it's kind of popular to say, oh, you should protect your interest, you should put yourself first. But if we're talking about romantic relationship, then it's not you. It's not always you, it's not always your spouse. Probably us, what is the most important. Right. Yeah. Okay, cool. Well, I don't know if you have anything else to say uh, within within this time frame that we have, mm -hmm. but I think you gave us a lot of tidbits on on uh, boundaries and where we can go from here. So I really want to thank you again for coming on. Um, did yeah. you have any, did you yeah. have anything else? Uh, do you have any, Do you have anything else to tell everybody? Yes. First, I would like to say thank you for inviting me, and this is my first collaborative video, and I feel really safe and trusted because you lead it <laughs> well and uh, I I were not nervous which is good like yeah uh, and also I would like to invite people to my channel which is psychology of happiness and I have a free webinar about uh, the 10 reasons why people cannot say no and this webinar is going to help you to understand yourself and understand other person like your spouse and when you know what's happening with the other person, when you understand where you're coming from, your childhood, and understand your parents, of course it's going to be easier for you to be aware of your boundaries and you can step by step create a healthy, meaningful relationships in your life. That's awesome. Well, I'm definitely going to say yes to that. <laughs> I'm not going to be impermeable. <laughs> <laughs> okay. No, again, I appreciate you coming on. I'm glad that this was a good experience for you. And um, guys, check out her, her channel. The links and everything are going to be down below in the description. And, um, you know, definitely have her on more often um, because I feel like this is a topic that a lot of people need to yeah. constantly think about. Um, That's true. That's true. It's, a, it's one of the silent killers. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Thank you guys for tuning in. Bye. We'll see you next time.